what if the cryptocurrency market isn't as bearish as some people think it will be for 2023? And what if it actually goes up instead of continuing further to the downside? Would you be prepared? Do you have a plan? That is what we are talking about today. Just some things to consider. So stay tuned and let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm Leslie. Welcome back to the channel. So glad you are with me here today. I just thought this was a good video to do as we wind out the year. As I record this, it is December 2022. We're looking ahead, seeing lots of news reports for influencers, for writers in this space, right? Just people in this space in general talking about the potential downside that we could continue to have in cryptocurrency, particularly following the FTX fallout and all the other events this year. But what if, what if? actually crypto goes up in 2023, right? What about those analysts? And there are a few I've seen who are predicting um, higher prices, especially in Q1. And what about those analysts who are predicting predicting that things could go up even toward middle to end of 2023? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about some things that I would do to prepare. Of course, I always have to say I'm not a financial advisor. I do cover cryptocurrency and I've been investing in it for a while, but I have to say you always should do what you need to do for your own risk profile and make your own decisions. And if you have questions, you should definitely talk to a financial professional who can advise you. All right, so let's get into it. These are some things that I would consider, right? Because my goal, and I don't know about you, let me know in the comments, but my goal is to basically be prepared for whatever happens. And I think this is important. I'll start off by saying that none of us are fortune tellers, right? Like there are a lot of people who are really good at TA and shout out to you if you're one of those people, if you dedicate your time to TA, but we don't rest, we don't know what's going to happen, right? Investors are very, very bad <laughs> at predicting uh, bottoms and predicting tops of the market. So the first thing that I would do to prepare, right, for either upside or downside, because again, we don't know. First thing I would do is to not assume that I knew 100% what was going to happen. So this is something that's a pet peeve for me. And I see it, you know, fairly often, I would say, especially when I'm, you know, researching things on Twitter is people say things like this will happen, right? This will go up. Remember when a lot of people thought that Bitcoin was going to hit 100K and people are like, Bitcoin will hit 100K by the end of the year. And, you know, as we saw, that didn't happen. So I would be very, 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 very careful about thinking that I knew exactly what was going to happen. And that would sort of start my orientation into the space for planning what to do for 2023. I would be open to the fact that, in fact, I do not know what's going to happen. I can have an idea and I can desire that certain things happen, but I don't necessarily know. So that would be number one. I would not <laughs> tell myself that I'm a fortune teller and I know for sure what's going to happen. Um, the second thing that I would do is to be really open to voices, even those that I don't necessarily agree with. So another problem that I see in investing and just really within life in general, let's be honest, is that we can get ourselves in these little echo chambers where we surround ourselves only with people who agree with us. And this can be really dangerous. So um, Maybe I'll explore this further, but there's there's a situation with herd mentality where we go along with the herd and we can kind of get pulled along with the crowd. And I think particularly in this case, when we don't know what's happening in 2023, we have all of these things in the mix. We have people who are, who are predicting further downside. And look, you know, maybe rightfully so, right? Like we see what's going on in the world. We see, you know, these big global events that are happening. We know inflation is very high downside seems reasonable, right? But to assume that that's the only thing that could possibly happen, I think is a little bit dangerous because as we know, crypto is very volatile and very unpredictable. And it could also be reasonable that maybe as some people said that we could experience a rally and we could experience some upside. So I would be really open to hearing people from both sides. And then I would do my own research and kind of decide how I wanted to move. But I wouldn't block out any particular point of view just because I didn't agree with it, right? And I think that's a really important stands to take on a lot of topics. I'm not going to say all of them because that's another discussion, but I think when we're thinking about investing, it's good to kind of be open to different points of view. Almost done. We're about halfway through. I would say another thing that I would do if I, you know, am not sure as I'm not, again, I don't know what's going to happen. Another thing that I would do is to make sure that I was positioned for further downside. So, you know, if you're in crypto, you always hear people say, buy the dip, buy the dip. And, you know, 
there are great points to that. I think that I definitely have bought some dips, especially recently, right? I'm DCAing into a few things right now, but I would not want to put all of my capital into the market when I was uncertain about what was going to happen. So as I particularly am like maybe DCAing into certain things, I would keep some money on the side just in case things drop further, right? And you know, I am okay if I miss if I miss the bottom and things start going back up. I you know, it happens. I'm not superhuman, but if things drop further, I would love to back up the truck, <laughs> okay? If Bitcoin hits certain targets that people are calling for, I saw one research firm even say, and again, I cannot confirm, you know, that I think this is going to happen. I don't know how they came to this analysis, but I saw one research firm say that, you know, Bitcoin could even hit 5K, right? If that happens, what an amazing buying opportunity would that be, right? Like that would be exciting. So for me, I would keep some money on the side just in case, um, coins that I'm looking at, tokens that I'm looking at hit lower buying levels. At the same time, though, I would also, and this is probably um, wrapping this up, I would continue to DCA into things that I like, right? Because I want to be positioned for both the downside and a potential upside. If this, you know, if we all get surprised, as we know, crypto is a very psychological market, right? And so, Sometimes what the herd thinks and what the herd expects is not what happens. Again, we saw this when Bitcoin, you know, people were predicting Bitcoin to hit all time highs of 100K and that didn't happen. Right. And everyone was people were so convinced. And again, look, we're all wrong at certain times. This is not to pile on to anybody. But you just my point is you never know what's going to happen. Right. You never know as an individual, I don't think. And so I would continue to DCA into things that I am interested in that actually I just bought some things the other day. <laughs> so I would continue to do that just to be prepared, because basically in looking at my holdings, I just want to know that if things do start to go up, that I don't feel tempted to like get in when prices are too high, right? And we know what that is. That's called FOMOing when you leap in, when things are going crazy. And obviously that's not a great idea in investing. So I would want to position myself, you know, for the downside and for the upside. And so I would continue to DCA in when things hit my target to position myself if things go up. But knowing, remember that last point, that if things all of a sudden go down, if the elevator goes down to the first floor or the basement, right? I would want to have a little bit of powder to be prepared for that. So these are just some things that I'm doing. If you know they resonate with you, let me know. Let me know. I know some people I've seen, and, and I guess the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen some people say that they're completely waiting until um, you know Bitcoin, for example, hits exactly the target that they want. And sometimes the target is pretty low. So I just do this video to say, you know, again, we're really, you know, bad at timing bottoms. Just be open maybe to other strategies. But again, you are in charge of your own money and your own investing. And you always decide what is best for you and what your risk tolerance is. So that'll do it for this video. Thank you for staying with me. I would love to know your thoughts, by the way, as we head into 2023, or if you're watching this in early 2023, what are you expecting for the year? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think we'll get further downside? Do you think we'll get some target prices that you might be eyeing? Or do you think that we might be off to the races or at least have a little rally? Let me know and definitely subscribe to the channel. I would love to see you back with me again. Feel free to share this video. And that's it for now. Take care and bye.